A federal judge in Texas is likely to make a decision soon on a lawsuit that would end the distribution of one of the most common and effective drugs used in medication abortions by seeking to overturn the decades-old FDA approval of Mifepristone. It's the most significant abortion-related case since the fall of Roe v. Wade in June and will have implications even in Democratic-controlled states like New Jersey, where abortion rights are protected. For more, I'm joined now by Kimberly Mutcherson, the co-dean and professor of law at Rutgers Camden Law School. Dean Mutcherson, help us to understand who is in this group bringing the lawsuit and what's in their argument behind why the FDA should have their authorization reversed. Sure. So uh, the group bringing bringing the case, um, unsurprisingly, is a deeply anti-abortion organization. Um, and their goal essentially is to convince a judge in Texas, they were very specific about where they decided to file this lawsuit because they really wanted to get this particular judge, um, to get that judge essentially to decide that one of the drugs that is used for medication abortion should never have been approved. Um, mifepris mifepristone, which is a hard one, hard one to say, um, which has actually been on the market in the United States, has been approved in the United States for over two decades. Um, but the plaintiffs here are claiming that it is uh, that the process by which it was approved was flawed, um, that it creates burdens on the healthcare system, that it creates unfair risk or unnecessary risks um, for pregnant women. Um, and so the list sort of goes on. Um, but their goal essentially is to um, get the FDA to no longer allow this drug to be dispensed in the United States. Well, if the judge, and, and we will point out the judge is a Trump appointee yep. um, from 2017, if the judge does side with this group, what would be the immediate impact? So the immediate impact is an impact on the parties, right? So when you have a lawsuit, it's the parties really who are going to be bound by the decisions of the court. And the, the space that we're in right now is a preliminary injunction. So the goal here is basically to get an order. The plaintiffs want an order um, that will sit in place for the pendency of the proceedings. Um, and so part of what they have to do is they have to show that they have a likelihood of succeeding on the merits. So if we get this injunction um, from this judge, it will obviously bound, bind the people who are um, in the case, which in this case includes one of the manufacturers um, of mif mifepristone. So that manufacturer would not be allowed to produce the drug or to sell the drug um, in the United States. Um, but there are also generic versions of the drug who would not be bound um, by that lawsuit. Um, and quite frankly, it's not clear that the FDA is, is going to be bound. Um, and here's what I mean by that. So the FDA actually has a process in place that it uses if it wants to withdraw approval of a drug. And this lawsuit is trying to circumvent that process. Um, so the FDA could say, listen, if we want to do this, we have a process and we could start that process, which makes a lot more sense. The FDA could decide it's not going to um, enforce any withdrawal of the approval of the medication. Um, so even if we have this order from the court, the FDA could say, we're not going to do anything about it. So if people are still just dispensing, um, that's going to be fine with us. Um, and quite frankly, uh, the idea that everybody is getting their pills um, from a you know, licensed pharmacist or that they're all going to a doctor's office really misses the mark because quite frankly, a lot of these pills can be purchased online. They can be purchased on the internet. So it's not even clear, even if we do get this order from the judge, that people won't be able to still access mifepristone. Well, what's the effect in a state like New Jersey? Our lawmakers have moved to codify abortion rights here. Um, would it still impact access? It really shouldn't impact access for a few reasons, right? One, as you say, New Jersey has um, worked very hard over the last year or so to make sure that it is clear that people who are seeking abortion care in New, Jer New Jersey are going to be able to access it and that providers 
are going to be able to provide abortion care to people in New Jersey. So the question really will be whether there is um, sort of um, countrywide impact of what e whatever order comes from this judge. And again, that really depends on, in a lot of ways, what the FDA decides that it wants to do. So assuming that this judge comes down on the side of the plaintiffs, which seems likely, uh, given that he has been very clear about his anti-abortion sentiments, um, then it really falls into the FDA's court. And the FDA says, listen, there's nothing, we're not gonna do anything here, um, then we're all gonna be fine in New Jersey and every other place for I medication. Guess yeah, I guess I'm wondering if it would lead more people to seek out surgical abortions um, and more folks coming to New Jersey where we know resources are already strained. Yeah, I mean, I think that's sort of the consistent problem that we have seen since Dobbs was decided. Um, so one thing, and, and I think this is really important, is so much of what has happened post Dobbs is about sowing confusion. Um, and so one of the things that we could see is that this judge comes out with this decision and all of a sudden, you know, news outlets and, uh, and press releases are saying, oh my gosh, you can't dispense this drug anymore, um, which isn't necessarily going to be true. So it's really important that we get um, accurate information out there, whatever decision um, this particular judge makes. Um, and certainly for some people, I mean, half of um, abortions that happen in the first trimester are medication abortions. So that's a huge number of people who are accessing medication abortion. Um, and so, yes, I do think that there will be some people who say, listen, you know, the folks in my state um, are, are feeling a little squirrely about continuing to provide medication abortion. So let me cross a, a few state lines and go to New Jersey um, and try to get access there. So the, the pressure on New Jersey clinics, the pressure on some Pennsylvania clinics, because you've got people coming over the um, state lines there as well, um, is only going to continue to increase until we get to some sort of equilibrium um, on abortion in this country. Kimberly Mutcherson, co-dean of the Rutgers Law School in Camden, thanks so much. Thank you.